time. So you see rationalizing the denominator is what this is. Now when you look at this number, it's 4 over the square root of 2. I will tell you, anytime you have the square root of 2 or any square root, any radical in the denominator, no good. No good. No, 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 no. Good. So you need to somehow get rid of that square root of 2. Now sometimes people say, okay, I'll get rid of it. Watch this. Ha, 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 ha. That's a wonderful option, but it's incorrect. So how do we get rid of this square root in the denominator? I'm going to tell you, when you get to you know, trig and precalc or anything above algebra 2, you're never going to have an answer with the radical in the denominator. How do you get rid of it? You rationalize it. And here's how you do it. And there's many ways to kind of go about it, but here's the easiest and most direct way to do it. Whatever's in the denominator, we're going to have to multiply this 4 over root 2 by a funky looking 1. Now listen, I don't want to change the value of 4 divided by the square root of 2. If you punch that in your calculator, it gives you a decimal. It's a value. It's a number. It's a real number. Problem is, I don't want that radical in the denominator, but I want to keep the actual decimal equivalent. Equivalent. <laughs> so I have to multiply by a 1. You can multiply anything by 1. It doesn't change the value of it. But I have to do it in a tricky little way to make it work. So what you're going to do is this. To rationalize the denominator, you're going to multiply by a funky 1. Or whatever's in the denominator, just multiply the denominator by the same exact thing. Just like that. And to make it a 1, I have to put a square root of 2 on the top as well because the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 Guys, is nothing more than a funky looking one. So, when I multiply, 4 is out of jail, 2 is in jail. I do not multiply the 4 and the root 2 because 1's out and 1's in jail. So, that means I just get this on top 4 square root 2. Wonderful. Now, in the denominators, now we're talking. I got two things that's in jail. I can multiply them. That gives me the square root of 4. Mr. Mother, I thought you said the square root's going to disappear in the denominator. Um, just wait. We're good there. We're close. So now, it's not gone yet, but it's almost there. The square root of 4, that disappears if you were the square root because the square root of 4 is just nothing more than this. I'll have to come down here. It is 4 root 2 on top, and this guy whoop, goes to a 2. So there you go. You've gotten rid of the radical in the denominator. That's called rationalizing the denominator. Now I'm going to tell you something. We're not done because we have to keep reducing if we can. Always, always reduce if you can. I have a 4 and I have a 2. And I have another two. I can reduce some of this stuff, but the analogy still holds true. This two is out of jail, that two is in jail. So they do not cross off. But this two and that four, you can reduce those because they're both out of jail. They're free to reduce. <laughs> Funny. So that means this is a one, that goes to a two. So my final answer, guys, would be two root two. That is rationalizing. Speak, would you? That's rationalizing the denominator. So that's rock and roll. That's all the radical stuff. There you go. Um, let's go on here. Let's go on to quadratics. I know this video is longer, but a lot that we're going to cover here. So here we go. I'll apply to these in a quick little couple examples. So this is 5C. How do you do this when there's two ways to do it? It's x squared. It's a quadratic. And the directions here are saying to solve. So how would I do it? One option is this. You can just pretty much say, well, Let's just take the square root of both sides. And when you do remember, oh boy, do you remember this? When you take the square root of both sides, remember, it's always this, plus or minus. So the square and the square root cancel each other out. The square root of 169, that's a perfect square. It is just 13. So it's actually positive or negative 13. So there's two answers to that question. That is one option that you can do. The other option, guys, is this. I'll use a different color. You can actually subtract this 169 to that side and get this. Now, I don't know if you remember this from algebra 1 or not, but that right there is the difference of two squares. And that factors into this. x minus 13, x plus 13. Ba-bam. And now what can you do? Well, you can use something called the zero product property to set these two things equal to zero, like that, like that, and solve. And you get either 13 or you get negative 13. So they're both the same exact answer. Which way is better? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's just a review. Down here, this one here, well, you can't take the square root of both sides because x squared is not by itself like this. So you cannot do that method. 
How do you do it? Well, this is a tricky one. Uh, you have to use your order of operations. It's the only way you can. So you have to take 12 squared and get 144 equals x, oops, sorry, plus x squared, and then get 169 over here because 13 squared is just 169. I subtract 144, I subtract 144, that would give me, oops, I forgot the x squared, I'm sorry. So that's going to give me x squared equals 25, and then I can just finish like I did up here. So just take the square root, take the square root, it's plus or minus, don't forget. So in this case, you get x equals plus or minus 5. So there are your two answers. So in that case, you have to kind of use your word of operations. Okay? So there's 6c. Let's get 7c and 8c in time practice in the class. Now, you have this quadratic equation. It is equal to 0, so everything is in standard form. It's all over to the left side. It doesn't matter if it's the left or the right side. But how do we do this? Then? Mm -hmm. The fun little f word. Ooh, watch my mouth. Factor. That's one of the actual cool F words in mathematics. Um, we have to factor this one. How did you factor? I have no idea how you were taught, to be honest with you. Xbox is one method that I know. Guess and checks is another method that I know. There's many others out there. But here's a scoop. You have to factor it into two factors, like such. These two are going to be X. However you're going to factor it, it's up to you. But it would factor into a minus 5 and a minus 3. How would you check it? Well, you could check it by doing this. You could do the FOIL method, if you remember that, by taking the first time first, outer side to each other, the inner side to each other, and the last times the last, and it better go back to this, where you did something wrong. So, how are you factor whatever? We'll talk about it more in class. But that's the scoop. That's factor. But that's not the answer, because the question is set to solve. So, I'll take this thing. I'll use CPP, the zero part of property again. Set that equal to zero. And I'll take this one, set it equal to zero. So I get my two answers. When I add five to both sides here, I will get x equals a five. There's one answer. Or when I add three to this one, to both sides, it gives me x equals three. So there are your two answers for that. Wonderful. And the last one, 8c. Here we go. Well, let's see. Uh, it's not standard form. I have 11x on the right side. And I have x squared minus 2x on this side. So I need to get everything to one side of the equation, but just 0 like this on the other side. Now you can take these two things and move them over to the right side, but I wouldn't suggest it. I would take the 11x and move it over there. So let's do it. I'll subtract 11x. I'll subtract 11x. That leaves me with this. On the right side, I'm left with a 0. On the left side, that gives me negative 13x. And that right there is x squared. Ooh, so how do I do this? Well, you could actually factor it if you're tricky with it. The c in the standard form would be 0. Or you could do this. You could look at this and say, oh, there's a common factor in both of these of a GCF, graphical factor, of x. So I could factor that x out, undistributed, if you will. And that gives me this. x, and then in parentheses, x minus 13. And all that's still equal to 0. So I just took this x, and again, I factored that. That's kind of cool because look, now I have x, and I have x minus 13 as my two factors. I can use the zero product property and say x is either equal to zero, there's one answer, or x minus 13 equals zero, which means then 13 will be my other answer. So there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, please apologize, accept my apology. This is a long video, I know it is. Put all this stuff together, you can kind of watch it, rewatch it, do whatever. I know this video's been choppy too, it's been annoying uh, for me, but whatever, we'll get through it. And we're going to practice a ton of these in class, and we're going to master, you're going to master, master these concepts. Rock and roll, we'll talk to you later. See you in class.